Hi, everybody. This is Anne. The first time I saw someone blow bubbles onto the surface of their pottery, my first thought was, well, what the heck am I looking at? But when I saw the results that were created, I was intrigued and I thought, I bet there are some cool ways to experiment with that. For this first experiment, I used a bone dry piece of greenware, dishwashing liquid, contrasting colored underglaze, paper towels, water, and a straw. I mixed one part water to two parts of underglaze. You don't want it too liquidy as it'll run everywhere, but not too thick either as you'll have trouble blowing the bubbles. Then I mixed a few drops of dish soap into it. I learned that a little dripping is inevitable with this technique, so I folded a paper towel and wrapped it around the rim of the bubble cup to catch the dribbles. I also found that elevating the piece from the excess liquid was helpful, so I placed a jar lid on my banding wheel, then rested the mug on top of that. I found that quickly running the piece under the faucet helped the bubbles to adhere to the clay better. I used the straw to begin blowing bubbles. I let them cascade down and around the mug, trying to keep a little bit of distance from the surface to avoid the dripping. I missed a spot, so I just blew a few more bubbles to fill that in. The longer the underglaze bubbles sat on the clay surface, the more intense the color became. And here's the finished piece. I glazed clear over the top and fired it to cone 5. It has a really neat marbled look. This time, we're still going to be working on a wetted greenware mug, but instead of blowing random bubbles with a straw, we're going to try and control the bubbles using a slip trail bottle and turkey baster bulbs. I mix the underglaze just like in the first experiment. I dipped the bottle in down into the mixture, and then when I squeezed it, the bubble extended out. You can see the excess liquid dripping to the bottom of the bubble. I wanted to eliminate that on the paper towel, but there still needs to be a little bit of the liquid to stick to the clay. Now I can place the bubbles where I want them. When I got the hang of it, I could do different sizes. Now let's try the turkey baster. Oh, that created some bigger bubbles and even created some really cool ring effects. I let the bubbles pop naturally. The longer they stayed on the surface, the sediment would travel down and settle on the clay, forming those distinctive rings. It was fun seeing the different ways I could overlap or move the bubbles around. Oh, I really like that look. I think experimenting with controlling the bubbles has a lot of potential. Now let's try the bubbles over bisque fired pieces. The first thing I did was to brush on my white liner glaze over the entire piece for the base. I also tested several other white glazes which all seemed to work well, so I encourage you to test whatever relatively stiff glaze you have available. I chose a darker, more contrasting colored glaze to use for the bubbles. Let's see how this fires. I again mix two parts of glaze to one part water. I 
I added a few drops of the dishwasher liquid to it. Again, I held a paper towel around the rim of the cup and began to blow random bubbles. It took a little time for them to latch onto the surface, but once they did, they made great bubbles. You can see that when the bubbles dried, the glaze looked very pale. I was nervous the glaze might not show up well when it was fired, but I love how that came out. Finally, we're going to try controlling the bubbles like before, but this time on bisque and using actual glazes. I prepared two glazes, ochre and weeping plum. I learned that I needed the glaze to be a little more on the wet side to get the bubbles to stick, so it was a little more drippy. It took me a few times to get the hang of it, but the weeping plum did great. The ochre, on the other hand, didn't want to stick at first. I added a little more water to it, and finally I got the bubbles that I was looking for. It was even a little more runny than the other glaze, so it'll be interesting to see how this fires. Oh wow, now that's fun, right? I love that. So this technique is really for those who appreciate a random marbled look on their pottery. No matter how we tried to control the process, we'll still be at the mercy of the elusive bubbles. On the other hand, I got to blow bubbles like when I was a kid, so overall it was really fun. Thanks to the newest members of our Little Street Pottery Research Facility team. If you'd like to join the team and earn a title, click on the Super Thanks button or the link to buy me a coffee. It also really helps us out if you hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. See you next time in the studio.